What's up guys, my name is Zidane and welcome to How Much YouTube channel. Today we're gonna review and show you a guide on how to use the new Gecko Science R606 Terminus Bitcoin Miner. So this Bitcoin Miner can mine Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, the power is about 700 giga hashes, but it can be overclocked to over one tera hashes, which is pretty impressive for this little device. Now this one uh, came up only a few months ago and now it's available. The retail price is $299.99 and it does not include the power supply. Even though some sellers sell it with the power supply, um, this power supply is also from bitcoinmerch.com for about $30 or even less. Uh, this is a 100 watt power supply. Let's talk about the ports here. You have a few ports available for you. You have a DC in, that's a 12 volt DC in. That's the 100 watt uh, power supply from bitcoinmerch.com and then you can plug it into your wall and then you're good to go. If you want to overclock it though, you have one that supports 10 plus amps and this is uh, like a VGA or video card in uh, that you can use either from a power supply that you currently have on your computer or uh, you can buy one separate and jump the cables to make it run. It also has a new feature I've never seen before where you can adjust the voltage of the core directly from the miner. There's two buttons up and down that you click and you can adjust the voltage higher on lower and it's really, really useful when you do overclocking. It also has a USB interface. So this is not a standalone unit. Similar to the new pack that I reviewed before, you're gonna have to have a computer plug in and running it at the same time. So it's not on its own, unlike Antminer where you can plug in a network cable and it can run on its own, this one needs a computer next to it. In the front, we have Artec Fan, which Artec is a great company. I really like everything they make. They make really good quality stuff. They also make thermal paste and stuff, but they also make fans. And the fan here is very powerful, but very quiet, which is pretty cool. In the back, there is no fan at all, but you can see there's two large heat sinks and the board itself is quite small. It does use the new chips from the Bitminer. So basically it took the chips from the Bitminer and they created their own device here in the US, by the way, it's assembled here, uh, designed here as well. In the back here, there's four legs that you can, that's how you just put it on the floor, right? Uh, or you put it wherever you want to mine it and you can actually stack them up or on the sides however you want which is pretty convenient because you can run multiple at the same time. Powering up with a basic power supply like this is very simple. So you can kind of like start having one, uh, almost one terahash in your house for like 300 something bucks. That's pretty cool. Before we start talking about how much it makes, the efficiency, power consumption, and all of that stuff, let's go ahead with a guide on how to set one up if you buy one and you want to set it up for yourself. First step, like we said before, is have power plugged in. It cannot run power from the USB only. And the next step is to plug in the USB that's actually included with it. You plug in the USB to your computer, and now we're gonna go to the computer, download a few softwares and things to run this miner. So let's go. Okay guys, we are now in front of the computer. And step one is basically connecting it to the computer. This is where you get it from bitcoinmerch.com. This is the miner itself. This is the power supply. Those are the two things you basically gonna need and a computer, that's all. So first step, plug it in. You plug the power, you plug to the wall, and then you plug in the USB. I'm gonna plug in the USB right now together with you guys. Boom, I plug it in. And now we are going to step number two, which is the software. The software you're gonna have to download called ZADIG. This one kind of finds the miner and install the correct uh, USB drivers. That's the next step. The link will be below in the description, step by step, so you can do it yourself. This is a fresh new computer. I have not done this in this computer yet, so we can be able to do it right now. Now here is all my devices here. I listed all the devices. As you can see here, I found R606 Bitcoin Miner, and that's the one we're gonna choose. I, options, list all devices, R606, great. Now we're gonna click on replace driver, installing driver. We're gonna wait a couple of seconds here for it to install it. 
All right, the driver installed correctly. Now we are downloading the CG miner that's specifically modified for the R606 and also works with the new pack, which is the USB device. The way to find it is two ways. One, go to the description below. I just grabbed the newest CG miner that is out there and I put the link, just download it there. You can also go to Bitcoin Talk and find the new pack or the R606. Uh, support thread and then you scroll down a little bit. I downloaded it now I'm gonna unzip it right here and all those files are right here So you're gonna need to have Windows 10 in order for this to work So right off the bat you can go ahead and click on single test mining This will work right away as soon as we downloaded the new drivers for the USB And I do that first because then I know that I'm plugging everything correctly and the miner is working now obviously it's not gonna mine on your pool and you're not gonna get paid right now. This is just for testing, someone else is getting paid right now, which is okay because we're just testing, okay? So at this point, this is stage number three, testing the CG miner and you can see on the CG miner, I'll show you on the screen, how it flashes white. That's actually pretty cool, I've never seen this before, where it flashes white so you know it's mining and you can kind of see the hash rate goes up and up and up and it does take time to reach the 700 uh, giga hashes per second that we are that's our goal and don't forget to hit that like button while we wait for this miner to reach full speed pushing the like button helps my youtube channel a lot it will help this specific video to go up on the ranks so other people can enjoy it so thank you ahead of time for clicking that like Okay guys, we waited for a little bit and as you can see here, we already reached 720 giga hashes. That's the average of 5 seconds or so. We're gonna wait a lot longer to have an average of 700 giga hashes. It does take time, but right now we're at 740. Let's see how much watt are we drawing right now from the power supply. And I'm gonna film it right now with my camera to see what the efficiency is like. We are drawing only 62 watts. That is very, very impressive. Only 62 watts for over 700 giga hashes per second mining Bitcoin. Um, if you compare it to the new pack, the new pack can maybe overclocking it get 150 giga hashes, but naturally, you know, if you don't overclock it, maybe you get 70 or 80. So you need almost 10 new pack USB drives to be able to get the same amount of power as one of those. So it's more economic because it's only 300 bucks, but it has the power of seven, eight, or even 10 new packs for that 300 bucks. So it is cheaper and it's more compact and you don't need the hub. So there's definitely a lot of um, positive things about this. So now this is done. We are now going to go ahead and change the pool information to your own personal pool. Now um, to do this, it's very simple. We can edit the file single test mining here and click edit. Over here, you'll be able to change the pool. You see Stratum Plus and all that. The pool websites give you that information to change. They give you the pool address and then also your Bitcoin address or it could be also your user on the pool that you registered. So I just registered to Slush Pool just to show you how I uh, managed to change those information and get those hash rates directly to my pool so I get paid, all right? So um, I went to their uh, getting started Bitcoin setup every pool has a different version of this and I'm gonna go ahead and use the USA uh, East Coast um, This one is the stratum code. I'm gonna go ahead back to that um, Text file that we changed. I'm gonna change the pool information there now instead of this address I'm gonna put how much Bitcoin dot one how much Bitcoin is my username? That one will be sub user. So then I mine under there. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm gonna close my current mining progress and then restart the mining again. Now I'm starting my miner again and it's time to go back to our pool and then see if we can get any hash rates registered. And now we just have to wait. It does take a little bit of time for uh, until the hash rate is registered here. A few moments later. I am already start seeing some hash rate. So we are successfully managed to mine on this pool. And we already can see a little bit of Bitcoin here. 0 0.000.5. This is what we made for the few seconds of us mining and start registering it here. So as time goes by, as we refresh this, we'll go up to 700. Um, we're getting about 750 hashes which is 
really really good um, it's over the advertised rate we finished step number one which is plug everything in step number two is downloading the software and the USB drivers step number three is testing our device and see if we get any hash rate step number four is putting our pool information so then we get paid for the mining power now we at step number five which is overclocking this is my favorite part it seems like this miner is so efficient that I'm only using 60 watts so I can definitely go up on the hash rate and try to get a higher hash rate out of this power supply now if I'm going way above um, I might uh, overdo the power supply and get a bigger power supply so we're gonna see if we're gonna need one or not now we're gonna add this little code here to our mining setup this is uh, dash dash gecko dash r606 freak frequency and this is 600 and we can be able to change this to whatever we want um, let's go with 800 to try to overclock it a little bit I'm gonna save this file and start it again now the way overclock works is you need a very good power supply that's one make sure you have power uh, enough power for the miner itself to be able to clock itself higher number two you have to go slow add a little bit at a time a little bit you're changing the frequency a little bit to see until the miner fails if the miner fails that means it's too much you have to lower it down and it could be the power supply if the power supply fails you need to get a bigger more powerful power supply those are the steps to overclock but we also have another cool feature we can test out on this we can also try to play with the voltage of the core try to get it a little higher to try to pump in a little bit more amps in there and then get the hash rate up okay and we're also gonna see if we can max out that 100 watts power supply that we have and see if we can get our hash rate higher than 750 that we got last time okay let's try to up our voltage for one we're gonna add one more as you can see the LED change from over here to over here and, and now we're gonna see if we can reach higher hash rate if this is gonna be stable for let's say an hour I'll be able to go ahead and try it an even more voltage on the core even higher but we're gonna have to wait every time you make a change you have to test it for a little bit now what I also really like about this miner is the fact that um, it's very quiet uh, you can kind of hear it a little bit I put it in front of the microphone um, but it's so quiet and it doesn't get that hot unlike ant miners they get super hot they're super big super heavy you know you need a huge power supply and they're loud and they're hot and this one is just so much smaller and so much easier to handle so I really like those features about the R606 another feature I really like about the R606 is the fact that it restarts itself if it gets stuck it will just restart itself and the mining will start again you know other miners usually when they get stuck they will not restart themselves especially USB miners that just stop working you have to go in and restart it again this one will just keep restarting itself but it's also another thing is it's not so good if you are overclocking it and it's keep restarting itself it's not healthy and you're also interrupting the mining process so you want to have stable hash rate you want to have stable mining in general alright guys after about an hour of testing and trying out different frequencies um, this is the best I could get from this miner. I get about 940 giga hashes, as you can see here per second and I'm drawing about 115 watts I'm sending up 700 mega hashes and that's the best I can get on the volume of the core it's one below the highest because that was more stable than the highest it will just keep crashing so this is the best we can get 940 giga hashes for 116 watts not bad pretty cool but i have to say warning it will void the warranty if you overclock those machines almost everything you overclock it voids the warranty it's only only risk you might burn it so it's up to you we definitely needed to use a bigger power supply and the vga out port uh, to be able to power it the little brick will not be able to do it just from the connector there's some limitations of power there so you cannot reach that full uh, capacity of this miner as you can see here we're already registering 770 giga hashes per second for our mining power which is pretty cool it means everything works pretty fine you can even see 956 giga hashes or even one terahashes for a few seconds uh, that we're getting in the last five minutes 
uh, which is good amount of power. Now just googling Bitcoin mining calculator you can right away uh, find the website crypto compare here and we can put in the numbers and see how much we make all right obviously this miner or almost every miner out there in the market does not make any money right now especially because the how things just happen every four years uh, the amount of Bitcoin get released to you guys to people who mine is halved so it started with 50 now it's it, it divided by 25 12 and a half and now I think it's 6.25 uh, <laughs> bitcoins per 10 minutes it does it does sound like a lot because it's ten thousand dollars per bitcoin or something uh times six and a half every 10 minutes but there are thousands of people with with huge warehouses mining at the same time and it makes it very unprofitable so let's go ahead and put the numbers in we're about 940 giga hashes per second um we are consuming about 115 116 watts it costs about 10 um 10 cents per kilowatt hours in my area this means that we are losing this miner does not make money it actually loses you money because the amount of electricity that takes to run it it's actually more than what you make back without any electricity waste you make two bucks a month so it will still take you more than 10 years to get your money back even if you get free electricity so why would you buy one of those well it could be that you do have free electricity and you look you're looking at long term you prefer to buy one of those machines run it and get you know a few bucks a month and then instead of buying bitcoin right you buy a few of those machines you're running it under your free solar power and you get pretty much free money back every month uh now difficulty can go up and go down bitcoin price can go double so the price of this can change by the time you're watching this video you can make maybe double that if bitcoin goes up double that means you know at that moment profit per, per year can be 50 bucks or it can be the other way if Bitcoin goes down to five thousand dollars and the difficulty goes up which means more people mine you can make pennies so those things those numbers change all the time make sure to put those numbers in and calculate that um, this is not really a product for profit it's more of a product for experimenting maybe something to get you know free electricity from solar or whatever however you got free electricity it is a very compact device very quiet and it, this is kind of rare there's not a lot of devices out there that's very small and light and uh, does not have a lot of power requirement or is very, very hot so those are the benefits of this device compared to others but pretty much all Bitcoin mining right now is unprofitable so that's it guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope i gave you all the information i can to set up one of those yourself if you want to grab one for my website it's bitcoinrich.com and below i'll leave the link it will benefit the website if you decide to buy one for yourself from us it, it benefits us directly so thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and see you guys next time peace